We have a good looking batch of London plane trees planted here by the city. Basically on this side of the street, every larger tree that you see is a London plane tree. So those ones are London planes, those ones there are London planes. This one here in the foreground on an angle is a London plane. The skinny one is a young London plane. This one here is a London plane. Just look at the bark. They are really easy to identify. This one here is a London plane as well as this tree over here is a London plane tree. And of course I'm standing underneath a London plane. In this video I'll show you some of the botanical features that help identify as well as appreciate the London plane tree. It's likely that you come across one if you live in a temperate climate city whether on the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere doesn't matter because London planes have been popular since the 1850s. For a number of reasons they remain popular. One of them is ornamental but probably chief among them is a number of practical reasons. One of them also explains how it got its name. A London plane tree is extremely tolerant to air pollution and the kind of air pollution that London plane proved itself is coming from the Victorian era, basically in round numbers 1850 to 1900. During that time, this was the time of industrial revolution and the age of coal, when a coal-based economy was producing huge amounts of smoke and soot in the cities. Smoke and soot uh, coming from burning uh, coal as fuel uh, produces particulate matter that settles out slowly from the atmosphere and sits on the leaves. London plane trees have been proven to be not much affected by this amount of uh, crud or particulate matter layer on their leaves. They're still being able to photosynthesize and thrive and produce uh, fruit and produce pollen flowers and everything and, and keep growing. So that's one of the reasons. Another reason, and this, is, uh, this also explains why this is a oh, London plane tree. London, England was one of the major industrial cities where London plane tree has proven itself. Another reason why this is popular is because the tree is huge. It produces a large amount of shade and uh, it's planted along avenues or uh, walkways like uh, we have over here, the city here tried to make a little bit of a, a pleasant environment for walking, uh, for pedestrian traffic. Besides shade and being tolerant to pollution, London plane trees are also tolerant to root compaction. You can pave, like here, there's lots of dirt around it that gets muddy when it rains, but you can pave right up against the tree trunk and it doesn't affect the London planes. The, the dirt can get compacted either by pedestrian traffic like we have here where people are cutting through between paved surfaces there but uh, like I said we're just pouring concrete on uh, either sides of the tree or all around the tree it doesn't affect the tree too much trees still keep thriving so that's a, a source of root compaction concrete the tree also uses the available water extremely efficiently. So whatever seeps in between the concrete joints, the tree makes good use of it. It doesn't need much watering at all. So it needs very little TLC or very little um, service hours or very little attention in terms of in terms of looking after. Also has very few diseases. The the roots, root system is also shallow, so it can grow on any kind of rubble or any kind of bed soil that isn't too deep. Um, maybe construction rubble is not ideal, but so its, it's shallow root system is well adapted to living in the cities. The root system is wide though because it does need to uh, provide enough moisture for it to uh, photosynthesize and live. So, but the shallow root system doesn't grow into the perimeter drain of buildings uh, too much or significantly, but they still need to be far enough away from the buildings because the root system is wide. Two potential problems with the London plane tree is that the leaves are fuzzy, especially the young leaves. If I can get a nice close-up here, you can see both sides of the leaves are fuzzy, especially the young leaves upper side and underside 
and this fuzz rubs off really easily, it wears away. I had several coughing bouts while filming this video or, or making this video and uh, this um, fuzz gets airborne. It's, uh, it's an, a respiratory irritant even if you don't have chronic respiratory diseases such as asthma or allergies this fuzz from the leaves is making anybody cough so there so this, this fuzz is super easy to wipe off and falls off naturally from every single leaf starting at mid-season but by the end of the season the leaves are bare so this fuzz is a bit of a problem as well as the leaves are tough when they fall on the ground they don't decompose readily they stay together they don't break up this is leaves from last year and they need to be raked up so it does need a little bit of attention but but for the benefits that far outweigh its uh, its problems or potential problems the London plane tree remains popular if it's uh, if you have a London plane tree around you and you have chronic sneezing, sniffing and scratchy throat and whatever it's likely that this London plane tree being the source sorry to hear that but this could be one of the culprits every leaf is fuzzy doesn't matter doesn't matter where I check it so so that's also one of the keys to identify uh, London plane tree the leaves are maple like this is its this is also in its scientific name the second word in its scientific name means this is what they have chosen for it is that this leaf is maple like you can see the leaf lobes are really like a, a maple leaf and uh, the veins are sticking out from the under side or prominent on the underside there with their fuzz all right one way to tell London tree from one of its parents because being a hybrid means this is a hybrid tree uh, it means that it has two different species as a as parents the exact parenthood is still somewhat debated in academic circles so I'm not gonna go into taxonomy too much and classification but one parent is American sycamore and another one is oriental plain just go with this story and uh, so you'll have features of both parents on the tree. American sycamore leaves are less maple, somewhat mapley, but uh, this center lobe on the leaves is just about as wide here as long, or often it's longer than wide. On American sycamore, let me just get on another leaf. On American sycamore, this center lobe here is more wide than long, so they, this triangle is just just smaller. Okay, and on uh, London plane, this center triangle is longer forward and longer than it is wide. Okay, the tree is really easy to really easily identified from its bark. The bark is peeling in spectacular pattern and with a number of colors so uh, the outer bark is peeling off that's what you see here and the inner bark is staying on the inner bark is this olive green color the freshly exposed inner bark is this orangey color this is a little old there uh, so somewhat orange here another patch somewhat orange there and most of it is this olive green so all trees grow from the cambium layer that's on the underside of this inner bark this inner bark is maybe three millimeters or so thick at on a tree of this age they live about 250 years or so without a problem and its wood is valuable for cabinet making the inner bark is able to stretch and encircles the entire tree without a problem but the outer bark delaminates from it because the outer bark is unable to stretch it works somewhat like a burnt skin like a really badly burnt skin on a human uh, where and it's not just small blisters and finger boo-boos no like really badly burned and charred skin something like that the outer layers of the skin 
is unable to stretch and move with the uh, then lacks the flexibility of the inner bark or inner skin and you can see that the oops the outer bark just delaminates in in flakes like so and they are everywhere on the ground around the tree so this is why the bark peels off a London plane tree. So there's barks and leaves. I want to show you something about the twigs. The twigs never grow straight. So here is one twig here. There is a it changes direction here at this bud and then at the next one and then the next one and the next one and always stays ziggy. Never never grows straight. The reason for it is that the shoots don't have a terminal bud. It always grows from a lateral bud there you can see it stays ziggy ziggy and ziggy so there isn't a bud here from which the twig can grow the last bud on the system is is further back let's see how do i focus on this one just give me a sec here so the last bud will be formed at the base somewhere somewhere here and it's gonna change direction again again and again left and right and left and right something like this that's why that's why the that you can see this that the twigs are zigging and zagging constantly likewise uh, when the twigs uh, get thicker and thicker and they begin they, they become branches the branches also still display some of this some of this zigginess to a lesser degree but they're still not straight so with that said uh, its use in cabinet making is or, or woodworking is going to be limited by the fact that this is ziggy especially the young ones by the time the branches get bigger the zigginess is much less pronounced but it doesn't produce a super straight uh, wood for cabinet making because of this zigginess or this uh, issue with the lateral bud uh, the buds on this one I haven't given you a close-up, but even the buds are fuzzy on uh, the tree. Here is some bud scale, uh, not really, uh, some old, old bud scales. Let me just get you a nice close-up on this one. There, they're fuzzy. The fruit is fairly easy to recognize, of all, or fairly easy to recognize. Uh, it's a big ball shaped aggregate like this this is the fruit here and because yeah it's a it's not spiky more or somewhat spiky but it's not unpleasantly spiky these aggregates remain on the tree for a season and they break off and the seeds are fuzzy a further respiratory irritant this is how the seeds look like they are airborne they get blown away by the wind and these are winged seeds there. There's a single winged seed there at my ring finger. That's how they, these aggregates look like when they break up and fall off. So these remain on the tree throughout the winter. And they get the seeds get dispersed as these aggregates break up gradually during the next year or the next next winter and the next year again, second year after they've been produced. So there are lots of these little fuzzballs on the ground here, more here, everywhere. The fuzzballs are coming out of flowers, of course, that are seed flowers. So these are the seed aggregates and there are different pollen flowers. So you do have two types of flowers, pollen flowers and seed flowers. And if I can set the light, you can, I can show you that the, that these aggregates are usually in twos there you can see this one upper one and the lower one here usually on London Plain on American Sycamore there's just a single one that's this feature from American Sycamore parent uh, parenthood and there is a double in front of you and uh, those those ones over there are two single ones Sorry, the tree is a lot taller than I am, so that's also some single ones, but there are enough doubles. There are enough double aggregates like this one on the obverse of this leaf or underside of the leaf. And there's another double there in the middle of the picture. And there, a double aggregate. 
So that's a London plane tree. If it was single aggregates, that would be an American sycamore uh, feature. The pollen flowers are all dried down, but these very small bulbs born on leaf axils, you're looking at one in the middle of the picture, that's a uh, dry down pollen flower. There's more little bulbs, uh, pollen flowers there on this shoot. More pollen flowers. These small bulb bulbous features are dried down pollen flowers because the pollen flowers are fresh uh, and producing pollen when uh, the or pollen flowers emerge when the leaves show up as well from the buds. So these are the features of London plane trees. They are really really easy to identify and um, uh, if, if London plane tree is an irritant to you, I'm sorry to hear that, but London plane trees for their benefits will still remain popular and will be planted widely by the cities.